so I, I'm optimistic that there will be an agreement coming out of Paris. Um, I'm optimistic that, um, uh, this, I don't know if this is realist, but I hope that we will get a, a, um, a commitment to uh, a kind of net zero. Um, I, I think the wording is likely to be in the second half of the century as opposed to be in, being in 2050. Um, but I think if we can define what north, where north is, um, that is a, a critical anchor. Um, I am hopeful that the INDC commitments that come in uh, will be, you, you know, somewhere probably, you know, this time round in the, I, I don't know when people do the all the maths, right? Somewhere in the two and a half degree range. I doubt that they'll be in the two degree range. I hope we'll be doing better than three. Um, so somewhere probably between two and a half and three would be my guess. Um, we all know that there's a gap that's likely. Um, I'm hopeful that the um, uh, that there'll be a a much stronger, if you will, appreciation um, in a semi-formal fashion of the role that the private sector can can provide. I'm hopeful that there will be a thoughtful and intelligent approach to financing. I, I think we shouldn't get too fixated about the hundred billion. I know everybody is fixated on that one number. It's just such a small piece of a much bigger puzzle. Um, so those are all things that I think we may get some sort of, if you will, specific propositions around. I hope there's a deal around, around the forestry part of it because it's such an important piece, not just in terms of the kind of the forest estate, but also the wider land use and recognition of land use as an integral part of this whole agenda. Um, and then beyond that, what we need to see is a mechanism that creates both that learning and also trust. Um, and let's just kind of be really straight with each other that, that there's a lot of distrust um, as, as countries walk into this process. And there are still, I think, people out there who would say, well, look, even the new climate economy narrative was just a, a sort of elegant way for the kind of the rich countries to explain to the middle income and lower income countries that, that they should just get on and grow their economy in the right, in the right way uh, and without any help because it's all kind of in your economic interest anyway and, and all will be good. Uh, that's not our view. I think we are very clear in the report that this is, a, this is a partnership. It's not just kind of leaving it to developing countries to do their own thing. But, but, but we need to create that basis of, uh, of an opportunity in five years' time, in 2020, to come back and to take another look and say, what have we learned? Right? How cheap is solar now? Have we made any progress on CCS? Have there been more, if you will, um, material um, climate risks emerging faster because, because actually when we look at the pattern of severe weather events, you know, the kind of one in a hundred event turns out to be, over the last five years, one in 20. It's becoming systematic, not just random. Um, so I think the next five years will be another period of astonishing, accelerated kind of learning so that we can, you know, pick out the signal from the noise. And, and so my hope is that Paris will be the basis upon which we set ourselves on a course to do that learning. And then five years from now, we'll ratchet up again. 